Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of The Process. In the second episode, we looked at aerobic and high-end anaerobic endurance. Today, I want to focus on low-end anaerobic, commonly referred to as power endurance. The main differences between these are the intensity and number of movements. Where high-end anaerobic endurance focuses on lapping long routes and circuits, power endurance is much shorter and more intensive. Power endurance is the energy system involved when you're climbing for a sustained period at high intensity. Typically, I would say anywhere from 10 to 30 moves and always relatively sustained with no rests. Without adequately training this, you might find that you struggle to climb long sustained sequences without a rest. Remember that not all climbs have rests where you want them, so it's definitely a worthwhile area to train. Hard routes in themselves are good power endurance training. Either by attempting a hard on-site or going for the red point on your project, either will be effective. The benefits of doing routes for power endurance is that it's 100% specific to sport climbing. The negatives, however, are that it's often difficult to find completely sustained routes. In a session, try and climb a total of six hard routes at your limit. If you climb any more, make sure they are at least a grade or two below that. And last but not least, always give yourself full recovery between each route. This exercise is good if you have a really hard project you're working on. Aim to climb a minimum of 10 moves before resting on the rope. Time yourself somewhere between 15 seconds and a minute's rest before attempting the next section. Continue like this until you're at the top of the wall. This exercise is helpful if you want to work something a bit harder and at the same time also train your power endurance. It's good to include this set in a session with on sighting and easier red points also. Boulder reps are my favourite power endurance exercise. They are absolutely brutal. They are by far the most intense exercise I do for this. Choose or build a problem that is specific to what you want to train and around eight to 12 moves long. You need to repeat this boulder three to five times without rest, so don't make it too hard. If you fail in your third rep, that's fine. Take a break for five minutes until you're fully recovered, then go for another set. It's good to mix up the problems varying number of moves, grip types and angle of wall. The campus board is an incredibly versatile piece of equipment. It was developed back in the 80s by Wolfgang Guch, the pioneer of modern climbing training. To train power endurance on a campus board, the best way is to keep your feet on and aim for a high volume of moves with rest between reps. Aim for 30 to 50 moves per set and rest for 3 to 5 minutes for good recovery. If you want it to be more challenging, change the rung size or add in an extra 30 to 50 moves set with a short recovery period. The disadvantage of a campus board is that it's less specific to climbing movement, so only use it as an added extra and don't replace real climbing with it. You might see quick gains on a campus board, but this won't always transfer directly onto the wall straight away. So, a quick recap where we're at with episode 4. Power endurance is when the muscles are challenged to the maximum state of the anaerobic threshold. The training of which is sustained climbing for 10 to 50 minutes. This can be done on both roots and boulders. If you enjoyed the video and you're psyched to learn more about how to incorporate these exercises into a training routine, why don't you check out this link? It's a feature article specifically designed for this episode. To follow me and my adventures, check out my blog at www.robbyphillips.co.uk and check out Instagram, Twitter, and my Facebook profile.